Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Epic Everywhere. I'm Preston, this is Justin, and we're gonna be your host for today. Hey, what's up, guys? We have a great episode ahead. It's a big week. The Olympics are starting The Olympics, this week. baby. Yeah. It is a big week. It's also a big week because it's your birthday week, man. Come, Come on. on. It is, <laughs> and sources have told me that it is also your wife's birthday. Is this true? It is my wife's birthday. You didn't okay. have to remind me of that, All though, right. I so promise. So what are you getting us? <laughs> Well, I am definitely gonna be getting you guys something, but I promise you that my gift for my wife is definitely gonna be better. <laughs> well, that's fair, but you heard it. He is gonna be getting a gift, so we will be on the lookout for that. Uh, hey, we're in the middle of This Is Love, and today we're gonna do something really special, all of us together. Uh, we're gonna put our money where our mouth is. As some people say, it's yeah. time to put up or shut up. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm putting my money where my mouth is. That's what we're doing. Yes, here we go, let's go. Let's get to it. Well, hey, what's up, everybody? We're gonna have a great time together today. We are, we are smack dab in the middle of our This Is Love series, where we're serving, loving, and giving our city all month long. It's been pretty cool. We're gonna share some updates with you in just a few minutes. But it's like our own version of the Olympics. It's the Love Olympics. The Love Olympics. You like that? Look yeah, at look that. at that. Come Beautiful. on. I love that. I'm excited that the Olympics love. are here. You feel the love? I feel the love. Uh, man, the Olympics, the most elite athletes in all of the world coming together to compete. Yeah. I thought there was no better time than to bring back the best fight in epic History. It's oh, yeah. the perfect time for that. So I went ahead. I said, yeah, I said, come on, let's go ahead and bring out that again, guys. Come on, let's bring it back. All right, we're, oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, and it's oh. Back. oh man, you sure? You it's sure back. you want to do this? Yes, we definitely need to bring this back. For those of you that don't know, uh, last month Preston challenged me to a rock'em sock'em fight yeah, as see, part of our you... last series, and well, this is how things turned out. Watch this. Well, all right, man. All right, here we are again. You had you had to throw it back. All yes. right, I get it. I, that's my fuel, my motivation. <laughs> all right. I was also motivated by some of the stuff our team did. Did you see that poster they threw up? Yeah, man. Come it's on, man. Cool. Except for there's a lot of love for you on Instagram. So of course there's a lot of love, man. Of course, Philly is kind of an underdog city, so I appreciate you getting behind the underdog. True, but on. no mercy today. I, I'm gonna bring it full on. All Listen, right. there are no participation trophies in this thing. Deal. We're gonna go for it. So you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let me count us down. Here count we go. Count us down. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Five. Oh, come on. Oh, watch it. What are you moving with him? Come on. Yes. 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 Let's go, baby. Come on. Wow. Um, yeah, so by training for this, <laughs> you meant you just glued his head down. Hey, listen, man. I will take the W. And there why don't go. you go ahead and welcome everybody. I'm yeah. gonna need a minute. Well, welcome to church. I hope, I hope you recover from that. It's okay, man. It's just a game, just a game. Uh, but we're glad you're here today. We'd love to know who's on the other side watching with us today. So come on, grab your phone while we cool down over here. Grab your phone and we're gonna ask you to text in to check in, Preston. How do they do that? All you have to do is text the word here to 215-999-8575. Uh, that's the number on the screen. And when you do that, uh, if you're new and you do that, uh, we'd love to send you a t-shirt uh, just as a way of saying thanks for hanging out with us today. In Actually, fact, I got it on, man. Yeah, you can get All the Champs, the get Champs the Champ edition. the t-shirt. Um, hey, we actually have some new Epic t-shirts coming uh, that you can grab your own new Epic t-shirt on August 1st at our Epic Live. That's right, August 1st, we back. Come on. All right, coming back at three of our five locations. And since it's the Olympics, we thought we would show you this way, oh, man, cool. look at that, come on now. All right, so you got our Parkside and Roxborough locations. They're gonna be meeting together at Parkside. Then you've got Northern Liberties and Center City. They're gonna be meeting together at our Northern Liberties location. And then, well, we've got All By Myself. King of Prussia, come baby. On. KOP, <laughs> hold it down. Montgomery County, Bucks County, Mainline. We're gonna be meeting up. So, hey, I know it's been uh, almost over a year since we've met in person, and some of you have never even been to any 
one of these locations. So I just wanted to show you what they look like. So Parkside and Roxboro, you're gonna be meeting up at School of the Future. Mm, that's look a beautiful that. building. That is, Preston's hanging out there. <laughs> uh, Northern Liberties and Center City, you guys are gonna be at the City School. Brand as a, a brand new venue for us, it's, it's great. And then King of Prussia, we're gonna be meeting at the movie theater by the KOP Mall. Can't wait to see you guys there, man. Looking forward to seeing you face to face. Man, we cannot wait. Just two weeks away yeah. and we don't want you to miss out. So we've created a way for you to get it on your calendar because that's yeah. where all the important things go, right? So when you text in to check in today, uh, we're going to reply back with a link that will add this to your Google or your Apple calendar, or whichever one you use. Yep. And it'll put all the addresses, the times right on your calendar for you. So you mean all I have to do is just click the link? That's it. When you, when you text in, we're going to hit you back with the link, click that and it's magic. Magic, technology. <laughs> yeah. So text in if you haven't already, do that. And hey, one of the things I'm looking forward to with our Epic Lives is uh, just some time for live music Absolutely. together with other people. Um, I love that part of the services. Uh, in fact, our band Epic MSC has prepared a song for us today. So come on, wherever you are, let's go ahead and sing this out together.
hey, thanks for that, Epic MSE. Totally looking forward to some more music at Epic Live. And between now and then, if you didn't know, we've got a great playlist of Epic MSE you can check out right here on YouTube. Sweet. Be sure to text in uh, so you get all the info for our Epic Live event. Yeah, we want to see you on August 1st. But right now, we're in the middle of our This Is Love series. And it's been awesome. All month long, we're showing love to people around us. And you guys have been doing some pretty incredible things uh, on our social. Have you seen the stuff that's been going it's, down? Justin, it's been awesome. There's actually this really cool time where we dropped off some gift cards inside of some diaper boxes. Yeah. Listen, as a dad of three girls, man, you don't typically find good things inside of diapers. Yeah, you got a lot of diapers going around. I do, and that's a, that's a good surprise. Uh, so kudos <laughs> to you guys. Surprise. Yeah, and I saw this other one. Some families are writing kind messages on their sidewalks, messages of love. So, hey, shout out to this family. It's pretty cool. Like, this is stuff that all of us can do. That's right. right. We all have sidewalks around us. You can just take some chalk and do that. You can buy some coffee for the people behind you. Uh, man, there's all kinds of examples on our social. So, check that out. And hey, I see you're rocking your Four Philly hat today. So, you're That's in. Right. Rocking a four Philly hat. Listen, if you want to get one of these hats, all you got to do is sign up to serve. Yeah. Uh, when you sign up to serve, we'll hook you up. Yeah. So, just go to fourphilly.com and then pick a project, show up, and when you do, we will hook you up with your own hat. Bam, and it'll land right on your head. Just kidding, we don't have that kind of technology yet. Uh, but be sure to go over there, get your hat, get signed up, get plugged into an opportunity to serve. Uh, in fact, there's some opportunities to serve this week uh, with an organization we're highlighting today called Cradle to Crayons. Yeah, Cradle to Crayons is a great organization. I've actually been to their facility. They have like this massive warehouse with tons of clothes that they give away. In fact, we're gonna hear more about them and what they do, so check this out. At Cradles to Crayons, our mission is to provide children living in low-income and homeless situations with the essential items they need to thrive at home, at school, and at play. We provide those items free of charge by connecting communities that have resources with those that need resources. Well, the children we serve at Cradles to Crayons are really living in some of the most dire situations. A lot of them are living in homeless shelters. So the items that they receive from Cradles to Crayons for a lot of these kids are some of the only things they're gonna receive year round. Quality equals dignity is our mantra. So really, we go through everything that has been donated to Cradles to Crayons and we inspect it. We really ask people to clean everything before they donate to Cradles to Crayons. And we also ask them, if you wouldn't put it on your child, then don't put it in our stream. This is a 25,000 square foot warehouse uh, that we use to host volunteers and collect the essential items that have been donated to us. Epic has been a, a very critical contributor to Cradles to Crayons. They have come in as volunteers and have worked through the mission and model here in the warehouse. They've inspected the donated product. They have packed orders for the kids. They have helped distribute these orders to our social service partners. So Epic has done basically the, what we call the trifecta for Cradles to Crayons. They've volunteered, they've donated product, and they've supported us financially. I think overall we're grateful for our volunteers. It's the volunteers that are really the engine of Cradles to Crayons. We have very few staff, and it's the volunteers that really are committed and passionate about our mission and our impact to children and families across the region. And I think Cradles to Crayons, we couldn't do what we do without the volunteers. We're incredibly grateful for their time, their product and donations, their financial support, uh, and just their sheer commitment and passion to our mission. Hey everyone, my name is Paul. I'm one of the teaching pastors here at Epic. We're gonna start off with a question. If you could be as generous as you wanted to be, what would you do? What would you do? Like if you had Oprah money, if you had Bezos money, what would be the first thing that you would do? Feel free to let us know in the chat, all right? For me, the first thing I would do is I would take care of my mom, I would buy a house for her, right? You gotta take care of mom first. Uh, for some of you, maybe you would make sure that your kids or your friends' student loans were paid off. Maybe you would pay somebody's medical bills. Maybe you would pay for Duncan signs to finally say Dunkin' instead of Dunkin' Donuts. You know, I, 
I feel bad for these store owners. They just wake up to a memo one day from up top saying, hey, our, uh, our name's not Dunkin' Donuts anymore. It's just Dunkin'. Good luck with that. And they're all like, but all of our stuff says Dunkin' Donuts. So maybe you do that. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe some of you went right to the holy answer, right? You're like, well, this is easy, Paul. Uh, I'd help the orphans and the widows, James 127. Or the fatherless and the oppressed, Isaiah 117. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't be wrong. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. But seriously, if you had the resources, what would you do for others and not just for yourself? It's a cool exercise in thinking about and tapping into the best of what God wants for us, which is to become generous people. And I love thinking about this and thinking about what I would do. There's a caveat though. There's a lot that I wanna do that most likely I can't do and maybe I'll never be able to do. You know what I mean? Like I was never amazing at math, but when I look at how much I make, and then I start thinking about how much would it cost to feed everyone who's hungry in the city every day? I mean, even if I'm buying ramen, right? That's basically impossible. And now I've given up and my dreams are dead. And this is what happens with a lot of us. We want to be generous. We have these dreams of what we could do. And then reality sinks in, right? The, the reality of the needs around us, which are too great, the reality of our own limitations, and we kind of give up. It's like Helen Keller would often say, alone, you can do so little. Wait, what? Helen Keller said that? Now, this is a real quote, by the way. Wow, it's really not helpful. Now, fortunately for all of us, there is a second half to this quote that's much better. And this is also a lesson in, I can make anybody say anything I want as long as I take them out of context. So if you're feeling super bummed, don't worry about it. Okay, hope is on the way. Uh, we're gonna get to the sunnier side of that quote in, in a little bit. So we're in a series this month called, This is Love. This month is all about focusing our efforts to follow the example of Jesus, to love and to serve and to give to people in and around our city who need it. And as Justin reminded us in week one of the series, Jesus gave us a pretty clear directive. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I've loved you. And what Jesus modeled for us was a love that is sacrificial and a love that serves, a love that's generous. And this week as a church, we're going to do something very specific to be generous to our city. And I'm going to get to that at the end. Some of you are like, hey, you're just pushing everything off till later. The Helen Keller quote, what we're supposed to do with our money. Oh, well, when's this going to end? We want to know now. But before we're going to get to do, get in, getting into what we're going to do with our generosity, we're going to talk about something that we can all learn from Helen Keller and from the early church when it comes to being generous. Now, in scripture in the book of Acts, the apostle Paul at one point is preparing to leave and to travel away from the church in Ephesus and as a part of his farewell, he has a few important reminders for them. And he reminds them of something that Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when you first hear that, you're kind of like, more blessed to give? Like more blessed? Are you sure, Jesus? Like, have you ever received a bunch of gifts? You ever been to a birthday party, Jesus? I feel like Jesus would be like, yes, it's every Christmas. And somehow you end up getting all the gifts. Hmm. Uh, you got me, Jesus. Hey, but receiving is awesome, right? Receiving is awesome. But Jesus reminds us of this truth. We're better off when we give. And there are so many other places in Scripture that remind us of that truth. Paul reminds the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Which is to say, if you're stingy, that comes back to you. If you're generous, that comes back to you. In Proverbs, Solomon writes this, one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched and who, one who waters will himself be watered. Now, 
This is, none of this is to say that if you're generous with your money, it's like a code to get a monetary reward. Like if you give your money, you will get more money and a boat and a jet. But Jesus does say that you'll be blessed. And there are a lot of ways to experience blessing. And the cool thing is there's all kinds of research now that's out there to prove exactly this, that being generous, for example, makes you happier. It has a positive effect on you mentally. It actually has a positive effect on you physically. It has a positive effect on you spiritually. It has a positive effect on your relationships and it has a positive effect on your community. There is blessing there. And for me, being generous is this area that I'm always striving to become more like Jesus. It's an area where honestly, I always need to grow. And I'm sure that just about everybody here, you're the same way. So I think that we all want to be generous. I don't think I have to convince you about that. But for a million reasons, actually being generous can be hard to do, especially when we want to be generous, but then we realize that the needs around us are so great and so daunting and our own circumstances are so limiting. Like there's no way that I can do anything about that. Which brings us back to Helen Keller. Alone, you can do so little. You're like, oh no, not this again. This is actually a two sentence thought. Alone, you can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Oh, thank God, that's way better. That's way better. Alone, you can do so little. Together, we can do so much. And this is not to diminish in any way any of the small, seemingly unimportant things that you can do on your own. All the small things, shout out to Blink-22, do matter. The small things do matter. Helen Keller isn't disqualifying those. I think here she's speaking specifically to that feeling of defeat, that, 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 little, that, that feeling of despair that we experience when we're up against something that we know we can't handle ourselves, something that's too big for just me. That's what she's addressing. I mean, just walk down the streets of Philadelphia and tell me there isn't at least a little part of you that's like, what can I possibly do about all of this? And that feeling, that little voice of despair that creeps in during moments like that kind of makes you want to give up before you even get going. You know what I mean? You know, I've thought it before. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But I love when someone who has every reason to despair and to throw in the towel and to say, I give up, doesn't. When they don't. So Helen Keller lost her sight and her hearing when she was essentially still a baby. She couldn't speak or read or do anything like that until her teacher, Ann Sullivan, came along and taught her sign language. Uh, Helen lived, think about this, lived in a literal world of darkness and silence. And, and Ann Sullivan, by the way, herself, had severely damaged sight from the time she was a child um, because of an eye disease. Her mother died when she was eight and her father was abusive. So two people who had every reason to say, I give up, the, the, I, we're not doing this. And yet, because they didn't give up. There Helen Keller was, an adult having learned to read, how to sign, how to speak. And that quote, together we can do so much, is what she would tell crowds of people during presentations that she and Anne would give. So I just think it's unbelievable that out of her circumstances, Helen Keller had this belief that rose to the surface, that rose to the top, Together, we can do so much. You know, in contrast, sometimes I give up hope when it rains. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing this today. Not today. Not doing it. The big lesson for all of us as it pertains to generosity is exactly this thought. Together, we can do so much. 
Yes, if you look around us, if you look at around at everything in our city and our society that's broken and hurting or in need, the weight of it will crush you if you're trying to do it alone. We are better together. And this isn't just a lesson from Helen Keller. This is a lesson in how God intended the church to operate. And think about the early church for a minute. The church started with a handful of apostles. By the fifth century, purportedly millions of people called themselves Christians. How does that happen? A lot of scholarly work has been done on this, but there, and there were so many factors involved. But here's what one Irish scholar, E.R. Dodd, noted. Love of one's neighbor is not an exclusively Christian virtue. As in, there were other people talking about, hey, we need to love each other. But in this period, in the, in the first few centuries, Christians appear to have practiced it much more effectively than any other group. So essentially, a lot of people talked the talk, but the early Christians walked the walk. So what compelled people to Christianity in the first centuries? The way they loved. And what did that look like? It looked like community. They took care of each other. They put together what they had and they took care of others. And they understood that truth, that together we can do so much. So for as much focus as we can place on the individual in our society today, you see this idea that we're better together pop up here and there from time to time. Like this is why GoFundMe has become so popular, right? People have realized, oh, there's so much that we can do when we pull together rather than just trying to do things myself. Or, or think about the big themes behind some of the biggest movies that have come out recently. The Avengers, it's all about these superheroes who fall apart when they're alone, but save the world when they come together. Think about Justice League. It's like the Avengers, except it's much worse. <laughs> DC fans are like, you take that back. You know it to be true. If you grew up in the 90s, we had shows like Captain Planet. Everybody, anybody remember that? Yes, let our powers combine. Earth. If you grew up in the 80s, you had the A-team. I love it when a plan comes together. If you grew up in the 70s, I heard that you guys didn't even have TVs. You just played with sticks and rocks. No, 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 no. Uh, what, what did you have in the 70s? I, I, don't, I don't, let us know in the chat, okay? Let us know in the chat. I'm not very familiar. Uh, oh, Three's Company? Oh, Brady Bunch. There you go. Two families coming together to entertain us with their shenanigans. There it is. The point is, <laughs> together, we can do so much. Now, I've personally been able to be part of this togetherness for quite a while here at Epic. I think it's incredible what we've been able to do as a church over the years. And I've seen this generosity and this togetherness on smaller scales too. So I've been blessed to have such great life groups over the years and friendships that have grown from there. Uh, I can't tell you how many times a friend has been in need uh, a bike gets stolen, a computer gets stolen, an apartment or a car gets broken into, appliances aren't working, someone gets sick or someone gets hurt. And now if I tried to, to help or to address these things on my own, I'd make a small dent. Not insignificant, but, but a small dent. But I've seen so many times, like again and again and again over the years, our, our life group comes together, our group of friends come together, and we stack our hands and say, hey, so-and-so is going through this, let's see what we can do to help. And we've been able to replace computers, uh, replace bikes, uh, replace appliances, uh, just provide for what somebody needs and, and whatever they're going through. And yes, you meet a physical need, sure. And it's just like Dennis said last week, Something deeper happens at the same time. Something happens on a relational level. Something happens on a spiritual level. And it's been truly a blessing to be a part of doing things like that. And that being said, I've also been on the receiving end 
of that kind of generosity multiple times. So for example, two years ago, when my wife and Carly and I bought our first house, within the first week, the shower started leaking through the bathroom floor and through the ceiling of the living room. Uh, just, just a waterfall in our living room and not the cool kind either. And I, the worst part about it was that when we first found out about this on week one, I was on a trip, like by, I was on a trip and Carly was at home and she's the one who discovered that the, the, the ceiling was leaking. Um, and, and I gotta say, here's some marriage advice. Don't be on a trip when your wife finds out the shower is leaking, okay? I know you can't plan that at all, but just don't do it. So it was this issue that just dragged out and dragged out. Like we couldn't figure out exactly why there was water. You think that you found the reason, you think it was fixed, it would happen again. And after a while, it started to drive me nuts. Like I couldn't just take a shower in my house without worrying like when and how much water would be dumping into my living room. Now fast forward to last summer, my dad was very sick with cancer. Um, he was in the, in the late stages uh, of his cancer. And Carly and I had spent almost a month in South Carolina to be with him and to start preparing for some of the things that we had to do after he would be gone. And it was the hardest period of my entire life uh, for a hundred reasons. And when we came back from that stint in South Carolina, a big group of our friends came together and pitched in to have our shower ripped apart, repaired, redone, and even to have our drywall repaired because there was a big hole in our living room ceiling. And I can't quite adequately describe to you what this meant to us and still means to us. They met a physical need, yes, and that's very important. I now take a shower with the unbridled joy and freedom of a baby river otter. But the lasting impact there what that simple act of generosity did for me and for my wife in such a terrible time in our lives goes so far beyond drywall and tile, you know? So I've been on both the receiving and the giving side of this equation. And I can just say this, it is so worth it for us to come together in generosity. It's worth our sacrifice. It's worth our attention. It's what Jesus has called us to do, and it's what the church was intended for. After all, Jesus did say, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. By our love, through our generosity, when we come together. So, here's what we're actually going to do about this. We're actually going to get into the practicals here. Some of you are like, finally, here we go. If you've been with us for the past years of our This Is Love series, then you're, you'll be pr pretty familiar with how this works. Uh, our church has partnered with several organizations around Philadelphia that, that are doing incredible and meaningful work. Uh, and these are in areas like food insecurity and homelessness and vulnerable populations. Some of you have already served with many of these organizations, and some of them have been highlighted in some of the videos that you've seen on Sundays in, in our recent Sundays. So what we're gonna do as a church is this. Starting today, we're gonna be generous in a very specific way and we're gonna give money that's gonna to go to these several organizations and help them do the great work that they're doing in and around the city. And our goal here is not a specific dollar amount per se, but it's actually this. We want 100% participation. We want everyone to give and to be involved. We want 100% of our church to be involved and to give this week, and we're asking that 100% of us give this amount, $39.95. It's so simple, it's so easy, and you get a free, I'm just kidding. But seriously, $39.95, and for many of us, I, that's not even a sacrifice, so feel free to go above and beyond that. And for some of you, maybe because of what's going on right now, it might be, so it might take sacrificing something you normally do maybe eating out once or twice, uh, maybe uh, canceling a streaming service for a month. <gasps> Don't even speak of such a thing. Whatever it takes, it's worth it because of what we can do together. And so just some simple math. Let's say that 1,500 of us give $39.95. That's just under $60,000. That is game-changing kinds 
of amounts. So you can do that right now. You can give that $39.95 starting right now in a couple of ways. One way is to go to epic.church slash give. The other way is to text LOVE to 215-999-8575, and we'll keep that on the screen here for a little bit. And that'll take you to a link that will give you to the page where you can give. Um, everybody got that. So hopefully your fingers are going on your phone or your laptop right now, or you're screenshotting this to remember to do whatever it is you need to do so that all of us, 100% of us, can give. Remember, is more blessed to give than to receive. And a big part of that blessing is the fulfillment that comes with knowing that we've done something together that we couldn't do by ourselves to make a difference in the city, to show the love that God has shown us. You know, back when Kent first started this church, I remember him saying something, and I don't remember the exact words, and I might be butchering this, I apologize, Kent, but it, it was to this effect. Hey, we're starting this church and we're doing this risky thing to start this church. And, and you know, we don't know if it's going to work out or not. The saddest thing won't be if we fail in our attempt. The saddest thing would be if we start this church and then if we had to close our doors and the community just didn't miss us at all. Like, if we didn't exist anymore as a church, would the community say, good riddance, like glad you're gone? Or, or maybe the worst thing that they could say, which is nobody even realized we were here. Let's make sure that that's not what's ever said about this church. Let's be like the early church. Make sure that our love is felt and known because of what we're doing and because of what we're giving. If we do that, if we come together, if we pull together what we have and we show our love by being generous and pouring that out into our communities, that's what the church is supposed to do. And that's something that we can only do together. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to be the church that you have called us to be to do the things that you've called us to do, to love the community around us the way that you have loved us. God, I pray that you would move each and every single one of us to take a step to continue this path of generosity or for some of us taking our first steps in this path of generosity um, to do again what we can only do together and with your power and with your spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks guys. Well, hey, what a special, unique opportunity for us to do something together to really show that we are for Philly. Not just talk about it, but to be about it, to show up and to give and be generous. So let's do that. Yeah, like we said before, we're gonna put our money where our mouth is. That's right. Literally, Paul asked us all to participate in this. We can give $39.95. It's gonna go to our outreach partners. You can text the word love to the number on the screen. That's how you can get going. Now look, for me, uh, it can be a little confusing what to give, so I brought my trusty calculator. Is that your here, small right? one, right? You brought this, the small this one. This is today. my tiny version. Okay. So you got thirty nine ninety five, right? And then maybe you're married, like I am, and you have two people in your household, so you want to give double that. So do you know what thirty nine ninety five plus thirty nine ninety five is? Not off the top of my head, Justin. It is seventy nine ninety. <laughs> seventy nine ninety. So you can give that, or just give whatever you can give. We're gonna have a lot of fun being super generous to our outreach partners. We're gonna give it all away this yeah. week or give it all away in the weeks to come. And so let's do it. And yeah, we're really hoping for 100% participation. Jump in, yep. be a part of it. Let's all do it together and show up for our city. Um, Justin still calculating. I'm calculating how much you're gonna give me for my birthday gift. Oh, you okay. promised, you promised, so I got that. All right, well, in this part in this part of the episode, we say, hey, if you're new, hang tight. And, Camp and my fight winnings, my fight winnings. Our lead pastor, Kent, would love to say hi and invite you to our next welcome times party. Times two, because I've defeated you twice. It's two times now. This guy just doesn't stop here. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Give us a thumbs up if you had fun, if you smiled, if you laughed at this guy. Listen, oh my goodness. The calculator is smoking. You owe me so much, man. Well, hey. Smash that like button. We will see you back here next week for the conclusion of the series. That's all we got. See ya. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us for church today. If you're new, we're glad you're here. And I just want you to know, we do church just like this online every single week. And we'd love for you to be a part. If you had a good time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. 
follow us on Instagram and we'll make sure we keep you in the loop. Listen, no matter who you are, we believe that God has an incredible plan for your life. We just wanna do our part to help you discover what that is. So keep following along online and make sure you text the word here to the number on the screen so we can make it official, send you your t-shirt and get you all hooked up with everything you need to get connected and be part of the fam. In fact, I personally wanna invite you to be one of our guests at the welcome party because we'd love the chance to get to meet you. Again, so glad you're here today. Text that number and we'll see you next week.